Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaide here. Okay, let's see who is there. Okay, we have Josephine, Uzomba, Mesonge, Patricia, Ike Adindu, Samuel Audu, Rochelle White, Babs, Pearl Adu, Tony Olobayo, Mrs. Abiola is here. Welcome, welcome everyone. So, so looking forward to this program. This is, a, this is going to be a very, very interesting, exciting, and a tough intellectual talk we are going to be having today. So make I warn you people ahead of time. Because we have a doctor here in the house, a, lect a lecturer in, Lon in London. And for you to be a lecturer in the UK, You've got to be good. You've got to know your craft. You've got to know, you've got to know uh, your art very well. So, uh, so well, I, I hope we have we are on YouTube already. Are we on YouTube already? Yeah. So we are here on Facebook, but well, we need to be on YouTube. Okay. All right. Here we are. Okay. So Jane Munsaka, Aisha is here. Yejide is here. Fonsani, Samuel Peters, Etienne. Yep. Theodore Otto, Richfield. Baba today is here. Innocent, Adejumo, Caroline, Pearl Adu. Welcome, everybody. Please go tag your friends and go invite and share the message. I want to introduce to you Dr. John Ajay. Is it Ajay? Ajay, yeah. Ajay, yeah. Uh, just, just a quick one. Not a doctor yet. Not a doctor <laughs> yes. yet. Wow. You, but <laughs> your mind is like the mind of a doctor already. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. John John RJ is yeah. a lecturer. What university do you lecture in, in London? Uh, Newcastle University, London campus. Wow. Newcastle <laughs> University, London yeah. campus. That it's is... a, yeah, it's a Russell's group, a top... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, in the UK, we have got what we call a Russell's group, Russell's. top universities, about 24, 25 of them. Newcastle is one of them. Wow, so only 24 types of universities like that? Yeah, are in that Russell's group. Yeah. Now, what, 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 how, can, how good should, could you be, how good should you be to be an African man coming from Ghana, yeah. studied in the UK, but you are already a brilliant man from Ghana? Tell me your story. Because how good should you be before the UK, yeah. English people yeah. will allow you, not even yeah. being a doctor yet, but to begin yeah. to lecture in the UK university, and it's in one of the top 20 universities, top 20, one of the first 24 universities in the UK. Yeah. And for you to be able to lecture there, how good yeah. should you be? Is that coming from Africa? Is that possible for any African? Because people are also watching you from Africa yeah. as well. Yeah. So is yeah. that a possibility or is just a one in a lifetime chance? Yeah. Um. I finished a top university in Ghana. It's called the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Um, I read economics, and when I finished, I was among the top three. So I was teaching <laughs> in the university as a teaching assistant. That's how I fell in love with you. Are, so, wait, 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 wait. You, are, <laughs> you, you are one of the top three? <laughs> That's right, yes. In the whole university? That's right. Yes. No, it's not, it, that is high. That is, not yes. a, that is not a joke. Yes, and then I came to the UK to pursue my master's. So after, no, so af after you finished, you were yeah. retained by the university in, in, That's right. in Ghana. That's right. You mean after your master's? Yeah. 
No, 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 no. In Ghana, because uh, uh, the government finances us, you don't pay the full university fee. So once you finish, you have to do some sort of national service. So you get posted into various departments in different areas where you are needed. And for me, the university deemed it fit to retain me mm. as a teaching assistant. Because in Nigeria, for example, people also do uh, government service, but yeah. they don't normally retain them in the universities. You have to be very good, extra good, before yeah. you are retained in the university. Same in Ghana. Same, same, same in Ghana. Ghana. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's how, based on merit. It's based on merit. merit. That's right, yeah. How long were you te teaching? How long were you uh, lecturing in, the, in, in Ghana before you got the opportunity to go to the UK? Uh, I did it for only one year. And then I came to the UK to do my master's. How did that happen? How, what, tell us the story. How did you get that opportunity to come to the UK? I had scholarships to go to other areas, but I wanted to come to Europe. And UK was what was on my heart. So uh, I was sp uh, sponsored by my parents to do my master's in the UK. So, and so now, Yes. If I go ahead of you, if you yes. don't mind. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I'm teaching uh, with Newcastle University, but I'm teaching on their pathway programs. Okay. Yeah, it is a sort of a preparatory courses, mainly for international students who have finished universities in their country, but they want to do masters over here. I see. So we, we get them ready to start their masters. So, so you also do. Are you doing that while you are still doing your own master's or you already finished your master's? I'm doing this full time. I, I finished my master's a long time ago, 2001, 2002, 2003. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in the UK for quite a while since then, yes. So you've been lecturing like, in the UK yeah. for like 10, over 10 years ago? Over seven years. Over seven years. I was working as an accountant. So, you know, and I had to stop at some point then because it wasn't where my heart was. Okay. Uh, so I switched to teaching. And ever since uh, 2010, I've been in higher education in the UK. So are you full-time? Are you into full-time lecture yeah. teaching? I am. I am. Yes. And I was... Uh, voted the best teacher of the year last year in my category. Maka baka saka lara baka saka lara baka saka tanda ya lara baba. But you didn't write that in your note to me. You are so, uh, I, it's, you, it's if you go to the book description. Yeah. Not the book description, the author description. Uh, yeah, I've stated that. Oh, uh, wow. Yes. If you go to Amazon. <laughs> yes. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you yes. so much for mentioning that. Yes. Right. So, you were voted the best teacher, yeah. the best yeah. lecturer in that university. That's right. In my category, in pathway category. teachers. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is what I understand. Yeah. This is what I understand. I don't yeah. understand why you should leave Africans because I have a lot of people that I know in the UK who also yeah. finish their masters and yeah. finish their first degree masters. Some of them finish their PhD. And they are working as guards, night guards. Yeah. yeah, very common over here. So you know about what I'm talking about? Absolutely. And they, they, everyone is complaining. They say we cannot get a job by our profession, they say. They yeah. say you cannot use your degree to get a job. You've got to struggle. You've got to get this kind of job, you know, just struggle. But you are an African man and you, yeah. you are able to get a job. <laughs> Does that mean that you did so well in your master's or what is it that encouraged them to employ you to be a teacher in that university? Uh, it's a combination of a multiplicity of factors. Okay. One, I would say I never gave up. I was turned down by about over 200 applications. Ooh. But I never gave up until, you know, because I realized there was someone out there looking for myself. And eventually it happened. Not 20 applications. Yeah, over 200 applications. <laughs> <laughs> you are like Thomas Edison. <laughs> 200. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> so I definitely understand why people give up and complain. So yeah, I because I, I think I will tell you the truth. Most people just give up, yeah. Yeah. Most people just give up. You know, after they have been they have tried maybe two, three, four times, yeah. they yeah. just give up, yeah. That's what it is. But you didn't give up. So what about, uh, did you feel any form of, um, comp so it means you are not feeling any, com of, any form of inferiority complex? No, 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 not at all. You didn't Some see yourself worse than them? No, no. <laughs> that thought will come, but I have to fight it. And I've learned to reprogram myself, particularly having come into contact with you. Yeah, but I know pastor, I'm a pastor. Yeah. I've been able to do something similar like yours. But yeah. I know a lot of pastors in the UK. Yeah. That will tell me that it's not possible to build a white church in the UK. Yeah. They will tell me that it's not possible for white British people to come. Mm -hmm. But right, I think you are in the same, I don't know if you are in the same, no, I think you are not in the same HMT. There is another disciple of mine, Magnus. He was yeah. in, at the HMT before you. And right. he also received that inspiration. He came right. there to get that grace. And he, right. he got it. And he went back to UK. Two years yeah. later, his church is just like my church here. 99% white British people. Right. Because he believed it. But most people in the UK who are pastors, they just give up. They don't even try. Because they say white people would not, British people would never listen to them. Yeah, yeah. And you are, you are right in your book. It is the picture you have in your head. That's what you manifest. So if you see it as impossible, it is going to be self-fulfilling. Yeah. Now, we are going to be talking today about this book, which is, uh, yeah. This book here, Raising the Next Generation of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. You can become an inventor, innovator, and a co-creator with God. Why is it that it is this book you picked? <laughs> but this is a very, this is a very, this is a very, I'm the one who wrote it. And yeah. I tell you that it is one of the least read books. But they don't know. What people don't know is that this book yeah. here, this yeah. book here is yeah. the, the greatest secret in this world is in this book. Yeah. yeah. The greatest secret in this world is in this book. But people are running away from it. And you know what they tell me? They tell me, oh, I don't want to be Bill Gates. I don't want to be Steve Jobs. I just want to be myself. But they don't know that what I'm talking about here is the secret. Yes. It is the yeah. principle. So why yeah. is it, what attracted you to this book? And what will you say yes. about this particular book? Uh, it resonated, you know, with me. And I think I, I've gone through uh, some of your materials. And out of all of them, in fact, everything that comes from you, DSA, is a diamond, it's a top mat, it's a, it's a first class. But if I am to rank them, put them on a scale, I think this book will be number one. Why? Makasa kalala makasa. The reason why. Thank you, know, you for it, saying that. Masha kalala yeah, makasa yeah, kalala makasa. Number one. Number one. It will be number one. And I've got a number of reasons why I'm saying this. Number one, it will not make me mistake activity for productivity. No. Most of us are very busy, you know. <laughs> there are phones on the internet going up and down, chasing vanity, and have nothing to show for it busy for almost nothing. So this book will actually uh, help you to see life in a different perspective and then you can be productive. Also, it, it assures you that you have got creativity inside of you, inherent. So I see myself as a, you know, a, you know, a repository of creativity, creative ideas, because I've got the nature of God inside of me. And it also assures every person who reads that you've got the instruments of conversion. In 
fact, the, the, the most important word you highlighted in the, in the book is conversion. Conversion. That's transforming ideas into products, goods and services that can benefit people. Transferring things from, you know, the invisible to the visible. Transferring and transmitting ideas, impressions, feelings into something that people can actually benefit from. And that is actually, you know, what creativity is. Turning what is in your head into something that is valuable. That's what the likes of Bill Gates and the uh, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, the Ellen Long, and all of those achieve great achievers have done. It is the principle, the timeless principle of conversion, which is behind all inventions, as you highlighted. So to me, uh, this book is certainly going to be number one. It also helps me to see uh, opportunities in problems. I now see problems as opportunities to be converted. Uh, and I think that's what you know informed me to write my book. It was a very painful experience in my parenting journey. And having read this book, I, in solitude, I was asking questions. How can I convert this? And it has led me to be a solution and to bring light into that sphere families. And now, if I go to heaven, even if it's going to help one child, my job would have been accomplished. So thank you so much, DSA. Thank you. This book <laughs> is wonderful. And also as a Christian, it made many scriptures come alive. For example, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, where he says that, that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It made me understand that I am already blessed. I don't have to be chasing for any blessings or favor or anointing. I am, I am blessed. <laughs> however, however, the blessing, the heavenly places, it is not in a form that can be perceived by the, the five senses. It is in the form of ideas, inspiration, energy, and you perfectly highlighted those things in this book and how to convert them. So this book, you know, it, it makes you also see that the value of invisible things. And it doesn't leave readers in limbo. It doesn't leave them hanging. It gives them the tools of conversion. Number one, time. The creator is so smart, so fair to all of us. Everybody has got equal amount. There is total egalitarianism. Everybody has got 24 hours, whether you are rich, poor, female, young, old. And that is a treasure that everyone can convert. Everyone can convert time into something tangible. So this book, I can talk about it all day. <laughs> it is amazing. It's actually got me you know, uh, off to a flying start to be a solution in a certain sphere. And I think in the sphere of the family, okay, every child that is going to be born in this world, if their parents get hold of my book, light will be in that family, if there is darkness. And I, 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 I acknowledge you for being the first to show us the way. Okay. This book, everyone, <laughs> you should you know, go and get it. Because if you get it, I can promise you it will inspire you to act. And if you act, your life can be predictable. Now, I have uh, another one of my assistants here with me. Yeah. Mayo yeah. is sitting down. But right. no, she has never heard the statement you made. Right. Because she has had similar statements many times. And right. many people say, my best book is this one. Pastor Sonny mm -hmm. BSA's best book is that one. She also herself, she has her own best book. <laughs> everything you write, BSA, everything you write is a top class. 
Yes, everyone. Uh, will you're, poor, you're poor, come money, money won't make you rich. Uh, many people will say the same. Thing. Yes. Church shift. Yes. Many people will say the same. Yes. Thing. You are high. Yes. <laughs> Insulted by ungodly. Yes. <laughs> What a myth that book. Yeah. It's all of them. <laughs> all of them. You are. You are. You come from. You know about as you put in the book and about yeah. Because, but she never heard anybody mention this book. And, right. and I know the reason why people have not mentioned this book. People are yeah. afraid. You know, I don't yeah. know why people are afraid of comparing themselves to the great right. for to the very great you know they yeah. want they think i am nobody now i just want yeah. to be somebody i just but, right. but to go to the level of yeah. bill gates and mark zuckerberg and it's yeah. too high for them so they don't even want to read the book i yeah. said yeah, people are not reading this one they read another book but not this one yeah you are right i know the reason why Tell us. Uh, you need a developed mind. Yes. <laughs> you said yes. that. You need a developed mind to be able to convert. And it takes work to you know, convert into a developed mind. The only developed mind into a developed mind. And most people may shy away from that responsibility. And I think that it might be the reason why. But for you to say it is the best of my yeah. books, even though you've read other books, yeah. for you to say this is the best, that's yeah. why my wife just say what? what? Yeah. <laughs> so what? You know there must be a reason. I'm sure you've, you know, you've not just read this book. I'm sure you've read some other books apart from other some other authors as well. So how does this yeah. book rate concern, you know, regarding other books that you've read? And things like that. Why do you say it's what is the best book that I've that you threw out of my books? Um, I've read the Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Okay. And I thought that was you know, <laughs> the book. But when I read your book, and if I compare to that, with all due respect, I think this really it, there is a spirit behind you know the way you write. And. And you back all of them by examples, real life examples. And there is no way anyone will read your book and will not be so inspired and so stirred up to want to be an answer to you know a sphere or a problem in this world. That you won't find in many, many books out there. So it distinguishes you. That's the distinguishing factor about your style of writing. Okay. And I'm not sure whether it's because of your deep, intimate relationship with the divine. So it comes from somewhere very high, very deep, and it's able to really, really get people to act. And that's what is most important. If you read a book and it's not, it doesn't inspire you enough to get up, to take action, yeah, then it's, it's almost you know, it's less relevant. But your books, Particularly this one, <laughs> I was so stirred up, so inspired, and now you know I, I know I can convert, regardless of what the circumstances are. I can turn it into something that will benefit humanity. And I think everybody. Needs I think everybody needs this book. Everybody needs, needs this book, particularly Christians. Because that understanding, that the spiritual experiences, the prayer, the worship, the goosebumps, and the inspiration you get from praise and worship, they are all irrelevant on earth if you are unable to convert them into something that will benefit people out there. The world is tired of words. We want food, we want results. And that's what inspired me so much to put something and give to the world. This is what Christians can do. So you want to tell me that after you finish reading the book, you are yeah. inspired to release a product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I started in September. <laughs> Writing in September. <laughs> and you already are you already did? 
and I already, yeah, by December I had finished, and I had to get in touch with the likes of Inkuru. Uh, Inkuru has been very, 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 very helpful. Yeah. You know the Inkuru? Yes. Inkuru, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, she so you me. started, so, you started yeah. in, sep in September? Yeah. September, yeah. And by and this two, three months. By uh, December it was done. The book was ready. Ready. Do you have, and, do you have a picture of, of the book? With you there, of your book. Only the e-book is available. Yes. So but, but the, can the, I, let me see if I can show. Yeah. If I can show it here. Yeah. Yeah. The print one is going to be available very soon. We are working on the formatting and things like that. So. But is it on Amazon? It is. It is the e-book is on Amazon. And I've given you the due acknowledgement. I give the links to uh, the relevant messages you've uh, given to the world as well. Yeah, but you explained to me why is it that out of so many ideas you could have converted, yeah. why is it that it's this particular product, this particular book is the one you gave birth to after yeah. finish, finishing reading my book on invention? Yeah, on conversion. So why this topic? This is a very rare topic, unusual topic. Yeah, it, can you explain that to us? It is, it is, and I understand why you are curious about yes. that. It was out of pain, out of desperation. I was about giving up. Uh, the police, you know, the social services were called on me, and I was at the verge of losing my children. They were going to be taken away from me. And so I went through, you know, a very extremely painful experience. And it left me almost depressed, almost incapacitated, at the verge of giving up. And that I couldn't see any, you know, uh, anything ahead of me as such. And therefore, the thought that key was the inspiration I got from your book. Conversion, conversion. Can I convert this painful experience into a product, into something that can benefit other people so that they don't ever have to go through the pain that I've gone through? And also the key lessons I learned from it. Yeah. I, I don't want to go ahead and give all of that in here. I want people to go and find it out. But, but I, would, I would like you to tell us what would this book do to people? The, uh, parents, parenting your best. What will it do to every family that will get a hold of that book? It will help them to raise their children to become their best. So uh, I, I share my experience and then I give uh, the lessons I learned from the experience and I give step by step okay, a systematic guidance and I've got uh, activity sheets that will help parents to actually know their children, love them, parent from you know a place of unconditional love, help their children to discover themselves, to discover their purpose, and to help them to fulfill. Uh, so it has got a number of strategies, about seven strategies, as to how to get cooperation from your children, how to uh, understand your children how to get the best from your children. And I think what, from what those who have read have said about the book, I think every parent needs it. You need to get in touch with Vanessa. Do you know Vanessa? You don't know Vanessa? She's on the platform here. She's, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's Vanessa Mensa, right? Oh. Vanessa is, uh, she is uh, a Ghanaian, right? But she's living in the new in Newcastle, or I think it's in, in Liverpool. In Liverpool, she's right. living in Liverpool. She was just awarded. She just got a national award from the Queen, right? This month, last wow. week, last two weeks, wow. and because of the the UK now is looking for solution, right? For children for african children they said the greatest crisis 
the, the UK government is having right now is with yeah. the African children, children of African immigrants in the UK. Yeah. So yeah. she is a professional, she's working as a psychologist, children's psychologist, and she's right. coming up with ideas on how to resolve right. the problem. And she's helping the UK government to deal with the African particular children and the African particular situation. So she needs a book like this. Absolutely. Yes. I think so this will be incredibly useful. I don't know if she's watching now, but uh, she needs this book and she needs to get in touch with you. She needs to recommend this book to every school and to the social yeah. services in the yeah. UK. That's uh, what, yes. That was exactly one of the comments by someone who reviewed the book before it was published that it needs to be in the corridors of power. Every school, every home should get this book. So, but that's a good thing, because that is what you have just done right now <laughs> is that you didn't just read this book, because yeah. this book is talking about converting every yeah. situation, yeah. every yeah. problem, even, even if yeah. it's crisis you have, or yeah. every good or bad thing, convert into a tangible product. Yeah. And you just did that. You are going through crisis, and yeah. it, crisis is the most difficult thing to convert. But yeah. you were able to convert the most painful experience to a tangible yeah. product that will bring deliverance to thousands of people. So is yeah. that is that a possibility for anybody that reads this book? Yeah. I think everyone in one way or the other have got something they don't want others to know. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to bring it into your pain. But what this book will do is it will let you know that that might be your platform hmm. if you're able to convert and it gives you you know what to do to actually position yourself to get yourself ready to convert it so this book is number one you know is a must read for everyone what is the you you are telling them it is a must read and for everyone what is the one single most important lesson Everybody who will be ordering the book right now on Amazon or dsasbooks.com uh, uh, at gmail.com, anybody who will be buying the book right now, what is the one lesson or one change, or maybe one, not one, maybe two, maybe three, what are the key lessons you think the person should look forward to, or what are the changes that the people who is, the person sh should look up to, what is it that is going to buy it now, so what should we look forward to? from this book? I think we can look at the chapters in this uh, book one by one. Okay. I yeah. don't know if you have got time for yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, want you to do, I want you to do that. Chapter one. Uh, the title of chapter, in fact, the book is made up of eight chapters. So it is not too long. You can, you know, read it within a reasonable amount of time. So chapter one is you, you, how to... You, you have about one hour to be able to do all the reviews, so you have good time. Excellent, excellent. So chapter one is how to convert invisible energy to tangible products. And in chapter one, it gives the process. No, 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 be before you continue, that yeah. just that statement alone, yeah. for a lot of people who are hearing you, it doesn't make any yeah. sense. Because yeah. you remember, this is a very intellectual book. Yeah, it is. So you repeat that phrase and explain it before you continue. Okay, Maybe. how to convert yeah. invisible energy to tangible product. People don't hear that in the church. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> far fetched. <laughs> so, they are not used to that terminology. So, you've got to explain everything to us in that particular phrase. Yeah, uh, in fact, everything you <laughs> see out there the cars, the clothes, the machines, the computers. They all came from the invisible mm -hmm. ideas, thoughts, impressions. So right from chapter one, this book sets us up the processes to convert inspirations and the thoughts and the ideas that flash through our minds and to come up with a plan to convert them. So at the heart of chapter one is that you know, notions that we can convert from the invisible to become tangible, something in our hands. 
Can you can, can you look this way? No, not that way. The opposite. This way. Towards your computer. Yes. Yeah. No, this way. No, the other side. Yeah. This. Yes. Okay. That's better. Excellent. That's that's how you look to us. Okay. Yes. Wow. Excellent. So, yeah. That's an images picture. Um, maybe still on chapter one. Still, the, still on chapter the, one. Yes. Still on yes, chapter still, one. Still on chapter one. Maybe the inability to convert is explained by you know lack of knowledge or our unwillingness to pay the price to convert because everybody takes everybody has ideas coming through their minds so we are unable to convert if you are not willing to pay the price so chapter one gives us the process of conversion and then chapter two the title of chapter two is Wisdom on Converting Invisible Energy to Tangible Products. And the key word there is picture. You cannot convert anything that you cannot see first in your mind. It's impossible. And it defines wisdom as the ability to create a picture, a mental picture. You create it first in your imagination before you can see the manifestation. Okay. But the problem is it takes a developed mind. Just as I've said, everybody has ideas. But it takes only those who have sat up to develop their minds, their mental faculties, to be able to convert. That's what we see around with the lines of uh, the uh, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and those people. Highly developed mind. As a result, when the ideas flash through their minds, as it occurs to all of us, they are able to channel it and to transform it into pictures first and then to go ahead to plan and to follow up and to eventually turn it into products and services that benefit people. So picture, ability to see in your mind, wisdom, that's what it's about. That is chapter two. So again, here, uh, I think you quoted Proverbs chapter 24 over there. Okay. Uh, by wisdom, a house is built. Wisdom builds. But for wisdom to build, it has, first of all, a picture will have to be created. And from that picture, then the transformation into a different form can be possible. So wisdom and then picture, those two words are at the heart of chapter two. Okay. Chapter three. You can become an inventor, innovator, and a creator with God. This, <laughs> will, it doesn't even occur to the average person. Do you mean I can also become like that? It doesn't occur to you know, the average person. And that's why they are not taking this book up. But you make it categorically clear to all of us that it is possible. In fact, that we are all creating, we are all inventing when we dress up, when we put colors together, when we do makeups. We are already inventing, but we can take it to a higher degree, a higher level. That it will not be only for the self, but it will be for the benefit of others, for humanity. So again, the inspiration is right there. We are, we can become. And of course, you also said everyone has got inherent in them the nature, the nature of God inside of every person. And that is what makes us able to do science as a human race. So creativity is in everyone. Everyone can create. Everyone can be creative, and everyone can become, can add to the beauty of creation. That's what God expects of everyone. That is, and the hindrance, uh, maybe before the hindrance, you also made mention of how, you know, the seeds and the ideas on, uh, of innovation and inventions are staring at us in nature. 
CRO out there. Okay, for example, horsepower inspired the creation, the conversion into automobiles, cars. By just observing, you know, nature, horses. A king bet flying in the air, it inspired the airplane. The way the mind works inspired, you know, development of softwares and operating systems. Man, robots. So around us, you know, <laughs> is a lot of, you know, creativity going around. And if you observe, if we pause, if we pay attention, we will be able to create, we will be able to learn the secret and create. Life is predictable. We just have to... Uh, Look at the patterns, learn the laws behind, the secrets behind all of those things in nature and what others have already done like you. And then just follow the steps. If you follow the recipe, we get the same dish. We get to the same destination. Chapter 3. You can become an inventor, innovator, and co-creator with God. I think everybody can believe this. If you don't believe it, please go and get the book. You will believe it, and once you believe, you will be able to turn it and manifest it in your life. Chapter 4, how to become relevant on earth. And that's where, you know, you hit it so hard, okay, particularly to Christians, that all the spiritual experiences, the prayer, meditation, without conversion, remains irrelevant on earth. It won't benefit anyone. It won't influence in any sphere on this planet. And therefore, the Bible should be seen as a book of conversion. When we read the Bible, we should take the stories and the ideas and, and the principles and start working on them to convert them to, to their corresponding goods and services, final outcome. And again, you mentioned that it will need a developed mind to make this possible. People are, asking, people are asking, what book are we talking about? <laughs> it is this groundbreaking, revolutionary book called Raising the next generation of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. It is a revolutionary book. Groundbreaking. Please go and get it. And you are saying it's one of the best books you've ever read? It is. It is. It is. It is. It will get you to act. Power will release in you. You will be so stirred up to want to be an achiever, to want to, you know, give up your best. So, to want so, to a legacy. so people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are not superhuman. Not just that God created them special, extraordinary. We too could become great. Absolutely. There is creativity in everyone because we've all got the same spirit of God inside of us, the same nature of God inside of us. It takes the instruments of conversion, time. What do you do with your time? And it takes hard work. And I think those ones are spelled out in other chapters, so I don't want to go ahead of myself. All right, chapter four okay. now. Yeah, we are on chapter four. So let's, let's move on quickly to chapter uh, Five. No, no, chapter four. Chapter four. Oh, I think we are done. Okay, okay. Yeah, we become relevant on chapter four. The title is How to Become Relevant on Earth. No, we've not done that. You've only done verse chapter three. Okay. Maybe, we, we, maybe you have done we, it, but can you repeat it? <laughs> okay, okay. We, we become relevant on earth if you are able to convert our experiences, the meditation, and the inspiration we get into tangible products and services that can benefit people. And therefore, your advice to all Christians is we should see the Bible not as a religious book, 
<laughs> as a book of conversion, a book full of conversion ideas. Ah. Ideas to convert. Mm. The zeal, the passion, you know, should be converted into plans to actually lead to final products and services that can benefit people. Okay. But again, you highlighted the point that it takes a developed mind to be able to make this possible. That was what is in chapter four. Okay. Chapter, chapter five. How to make tangible products on earth. And I was shocked today that how Christians have renegated, you know, spheres to the world. Hmm. You said that 600 to 700 years ago, Christians were ruling the world in all spheres, in very inventions in all spheres, in technology, in industry, in education, in sports, in media, in economics, in business. Today, you may mention that you know, Christians are the least of all groups in contributing to the technological fields. And it was shocking to me. It looks like you know, we've left the mandate to occupy Jesus said to us, Occupy till I come. Luke chapter 19, verse 13 B. Occupy till I come. We've left all these fears unoccupied for the devil. So, chapter 5 was also inspiring us to produce goods and services that will benefit humanity. Chapter 6. How to live the best life, chapter 6. How to live the best life, the superimposing life. And here is where you spelled out the importance of purpose. That to live the best life, they must start with discovery of your purpose. What you were sent here to do. Everyone was sent here from the spirit realm to accomplish an assignment, and a purpose, an assignment that will give benefit to other people. Once you discover that and you do your best, you can expect to live the best life. And Jesus showed us again, and you quoted John 5, 19 to 20, John 6, 38. I'm come not to do my own will, but the one who sent me. So everyone having read this book can now start from a position where they will be asking, God, why did you send me here to do? And the discovery is what is going to lead them to be effective in their conversion, in their processes of conversion. And they, if they do that, they will leave a legacy here on earth. In fact, if everyone is so purposeful like that, Okay, you will see a reflection of heaven's reality on earth. You will see no diseases, no pain. You will be so soaked up in research to alleviate pain, to alleviate economic problems, injustice, suffering. So chapter 6 is also one of the most crucial chapters in the book. Purpose focus. Purpose driven. And you said that it takes a close relationship with God, personal relationship with God, to make that happen. Chapter 7. That was what would get people ask, maybe asking questions the birth of religion. Okay. And if I am to give the quote by Woody Allen, yes. right at the very start. If Jesus came and saw what was being done in his name, he would never stop throwing up. <laughs> if Jesus came and saw what was being done in his name, he would never stop throwing up. He said, religion is becoming the bane of conversion. It is stifling, hindering people from 
converting. See, religion is Christianity when it stops conversion and needs to focus on own needs. When we do that, we tend to be using God as, as a means to fulfill our personal needs and not seeking a personal relationship with him. And you ask a number of questions that Christians should ask themselves. If you've been a Christian for a number of years, ask your question, what is the result to show for it? What are the fruits? Please uh, repeat some of those questions that were asked in the book, please. So, what is the fruit from your relationship with God? There is no way you will be with God and not have a burden to be salt and light and bring solutions to dark places. So, uh, one of the uh, ways to know that you are not being just religious is your ability to convert your relationship with God into something that benefits human beings. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I, I think most Christians will fall short on that measure. What have you got to show for your years, donkey years, as a Christian? If there is nothing to show for it, you might be doing just religion. What counts is relationship with God, your ability to hear from Him and to go and work in transfer it into something, convert it into something that benefits people. The last chapter, how to fulfill God's mandate on your life. This is where you talked about the importance of hard work. And hard work, it doesn't mean, you know, job or chasing, you know, salary, chasing money. It is hard work in your calling. Without work, conversion is, you know, dead. Conversion is not possible. And the three forms of work or areas you have to work on, the spiritual, the physical, and the mental, uh, particularly our ability to develop our mind. And I was looking at uh, the definition or uh, something I can use to explain hard work. And I think you gave something there uh, that each person should aim at working 14 to 16 hours in a day. Starting a little earlier, working a little harder, and staying a little longer. And when I read that, when I started off writing the book, when I come from work, my nine to five, the work actually starts when I get home. A minimum of three hours converting the time into something tangible. And you also mentioned the rule of 10,000 hours. That anything you spend 10,000 hours practicing, you become the best in that. It is a rule that works for everyone, whether you are a believer or not. And that's what paying the price is. That is Paul's secret, Apostle Paul. He did more than all the apostles. And he said, I labor, I work harder than any of the apostles. It's right there. Work. Hard work. He said, hard work activates grace. What do you need grace for? if you are not going to go beyond yourself. Grace is only activated when you go beyond yourself. Okay. And finally, you spoke about actors versus spectators. That in the world today, we have seen a number of people just acting. Uh, not a number of the opposite. A few people acting, and 90% of more just observing spectators. And it takes actors to convert. So my concluding or my concluding remark about 
these wonderful eight chapters. I would say nothing works without work. And if you do work hard, if you read this book, Raising the Next Generation of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, you will be inspired to work hard. And if you work hard, you can grow. And with growth, you can expect to be your best. And in your best, you will be happy, you will be fulfilled to have worked hard in your calling, in your passion, in your purpose. And if you do, this world will reward you handsomely here on earth. And more importantly, you have rewards in eternity. This is what this, can, this book can inspire and give you the tools to become. I invite you to get one. Thank you, Beautiful. I will have some other questions to you. Right. What do you think the future of Africa is if we could get this book into every school, into every college, into every stationary institute? If you could get Africans to read this book. Tremendous change. First, to be more conversion focus. They will be resource goal oriented. They will not just be doing activities for activities' sake, but they will have a way of measuring progress, outcome of conversion. Second, it will make people now value time as the greatest source of wealth that can be converted into any product or any service. And I think it will also help us um, to see the word conversion. Another uh, thing that I was thinking about is the, the, it has got another sense. And for most Africans, particularly the, uh, if I may use this word, religious ones, when they hear of the word conversion, most of them, including pastors, what will come first into their mind is conversion of unbelievers to believers. <laughs> so many. That's what comes into their mind. For most of them, it will never occur to them the other way that this book has approached the concept of conversion. As important as so many of it, as, and as important as that we have seen conversion is it is just the means to the main goal of salvation the main goal is to influence the earth with heaven's culture god's kingdom culture so that is a parochial view of if i may say matthew 28 19 where it says go to all nations teach and baptize them most Africans, including me, as I used to be, okay, I would see this as you know people in water baptizing them, but it is you know immersing them into kingdom's culture, kingdom's way of seeing things, kingdom's way of influencing the earth, spheres, nations, and the goal is to go and teach. So every approach should be systematic as you have done in your book. So your book will help people to see conversion from the way you have approached it. Do you think, uh, do you think that Africa stands a chance of raising up their own Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Elon, you know, yeah, Elon Musk and other people like that, the African version of these people? Absolutely. Uh, the reason why we are not seeing that is lack of knowledge. But with this book and with the way that you are sacrificing yourself to bring light to the Africans, if you like, it, it's just a matter of time. You will see the lives of those people you have mentioned emerge very, very, very soon. I used to be one of them, if you like. I thought, you know, not me, creator with God, inventing, innovating. 
but now I see myself as capable of that. So it's, GSA is just a matter of time. You are doing exceptionally well, and it's just a matter of time you begin to see the fruits and the results. Just a matter of time. So this book will wake the mind of people up? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. What do you think about the Christians? Because do you think this book could help set people free from religion and make them to be productive? Only if they will read it. <laughs> and just as you said, the title, you know, uh, we don't need them connect, but if they are able to read this book, I am 100% sure it will bring a transformation to anyone who reads it. Yeah. It is the main reason is lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge, and the knowledge we lack in the Christian dawn, I would say, is we just waste our spiritual experiences, the ideas we get from prayer, the ideas we get from meditation, the ideas we get from our praise and worship, the inspiration. We should come to the awareness that all of those things are only relevant if we are able to convert them into something that will benefit people. With that consciousness, the Christians can expect to be at the center stage of the world. Before you pick, before you pick up this book, yeah. before you started reading it, what were your expectations, and what how, how do, does that compare to after reading it? Were those expectations met? Were they surpassed? Were they you know under 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 did they, you know yeah? What was your expectation before and after? Excellent question. So before. I, I would say I was religious, but when I finished reading it, I would say I began to seek and value personal relationship with God. Second, I saw conversion not in the parochial sense of just converting unbelievers to believers, but I began to see conversion from God's kingdom perspective, ability to influence ability to provide solutions, ability to be salt and light. Also, uh, in my religious mindset, it was, and I think with, this is with most people, most religious people, they will not want to mingle with unbelievers. They want to stay in church and get busy with church activities, thinking that is the way to please God. But with this book, I became more of purpose-driven. We want to advance the kingdom on earth. Again, with religious mindset, religion because you know it it it, it alienates people. But kingdom-mindedness will make us see all people as offsprings of the Most High God. It will unite humanity. It unites all of us. Kingdom mindset. And this book makes you think about the human race as God sees people and not the parochial sense of it. That you want to stay in church and just get busy with church activities and ignore all other people outside there, outside. So this book has got me thinking. And uh, finally, it is now not, I am not need driven. First, God bless me. God give me money, favor, protection. Now I am asking God, what can I do for you? What can I do? To leave a legacy in your name. To to bring your values in any sphere that I've got influencing. That has made me to work so hard. That's why I was I got the award, teacher of the year. Everything I do. I'm giving off my best. And this book okay, is a testament of the results. 
So again, I cannot thank you enough for writing this book. It is exceptionally phenomenal book. And I think people will go for it. And if you do, your life, <laughs> the transformation, you'll be so proud of it, you did. So I will invite people to go and get the book. It is an amazing book. So, so uh, another question I would like to ask is, if you are going to talk to people, someone down there is looking and saying, okay, you tell me for yourself, talk for yourself. If you, if you, let's say you have not spoken to DSA, but you are speaking to somebody who just joined one minute ago, and they say, you tell me what has changed in your life since you have read the book. Just one, two, three, four, five. Okay. When I read this book, it gave me so much understanding of our life. When I read this book, it got me so inspired to want to provide an answer to any problem I see. And it has led me to write a phenomenal book in the sphere of the family. And I think it's titled, you know, Parenting Your Bed, The Essential Guide and a Practical Guide to Helping Your Children to Become Their Best. If we can help our children to discover their purpose, and become their best and influence in their spheres, this world will be a better place for everyone. And my inspiration is coming from reading this book. So if you read this book, you'll be stirred up to want to do something, to want to leave a legacy, to want to help others, to want to be of use by the Almighty God. And this is what I will tell people who have just joined us. It is a book that I would say is indispensable if you want to live this life and live a better life okay, that you will be proud of, this world will be proud of you, this world will compensate you, okay, and then more importantly, in eternity you have rewards. What about people who are complaining, who think that they have problems and they have challenges in their lives? Well, what, what, and you said they should read. They are saying, I have problem, and you are telling me to read. <laughs> Every problem is a business. <laughs> Look around. Every invention was as a result of the quest, the need to solve a problem, to alleviate some pain, to make life better for people. So if you have a problem, if you are desperate, I was in a, you know, in, in a point of desperation. That's what inspired me to write my book. From the ideas I got from reading this book that I'm reviewing. So if you've got a problem, it is a good start to get you off to a flying start in your life. To convert that experience into something that will benefit you. And with that focus, you will end up well. You have also read some of some other of my books. Yeah. And uh, can you mention, can you name a few of the books or all the books of DSA that you have read, if you don't mind? Yeah. I think what, what? the very first one that got me to get in touch with you with Church Shift. Church Shift, okay. <laughs> it's a phenomenal book. <laughs> Church Shift. Every, <laughs> every Christian should also read that book. Yeah, so Church Shift. Church Shift. Is, is is, is, you know, it's the book when you read it, you see, you know, the way to do church and also the, the way to be a Christian and the way to influence. Okay. On next that. one, next book. Uh, Kingdom Driven Life. Kingdom Driven Life. Uh, it's similar to this one. Yes. It's like <laughs> a continuation. It's the second part of uh, church. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so it is another amazing book. And if you are struggling with money, and I, it's not even if you are struggling with money, to be financially intelligent, which everybody needs, otherwise 
the world will tell you what you, you, you where you can sleep, where you can the car you can drive, and all of those things. Okay, uh, money will make you rich. Money won't make you rich. Money will make you rich if you really, really get want to get on top of your finances. Yeah, you must read that book. Money will money make you rich. Think. Money will make you rich. Huh. Money will make you rich. Okay. Money will make you rich. It has got financial. This, this one. This one here. Yeah. That's right. Money will make you rich. Another classic book. Okay. Is better than most of the books on finances out there. Very practical. Okay. okay. Any other uh, any other book you read? Uh, who am I? Uh, another fantastic book. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter just read it, and you know, it's changed her. How, how old is she? <laughs> she's only twelve. My first daughter. And she's finished this book. Finish it, you know. Finish it. Um, she's going to be a dangerous girl. I, I gave her an incentive. If you read it, I will give you ten pounds. Wow. <laughs> That, I think every parent should do that. That's do, right. Do yes. that when, when I did that, yeah, she used only one day to finish and money will make you rich. What? She, she has she, done that too? She, she finished that. And, you know, when I give her money, she says, Dad, I'm not going to spend it anymore. But you know what she told me when she read that? She said, Dad, this book, it is not only making claims. It has got evidence to back every claim. Wow. <laughs> so your books are transmuted. Every single book you've written, you put out there is a diamond. No, it's a treasure. It's amazing. You know. Yeah, so parents, you know, provide the incentives. That's what I teach economics. Incentivize people. Okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm going to tell yeah. I'm going to yeah. tell people to do that. I'm going to actually do that to my children also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in ten pounds, ten dollars, if you yeah, read it. Yeah. They don't just only read. When you read, I will sit down with, with you in thirty minutes and ask you questions. Okay, you what have to write you, exams you from the book. Yes. Okay. You have to have written it down. And yeah. what are you going to do with them? Beautiful. So once you show me those, I will give you your ten pounds. Beautiful. And now the the younger ones have also, you know, got the ambition to also oh, get their ten pounds. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. That is a great, great <laughs> idea. Any other book you want to mention? Uh, the other one, Nigeria. Um, uh, only God can save Nigeria. Only God can save Nigeria. What yeah. a what a myth. What a myth. It's another good one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Only God can save yeah. Nigeria. What yeah. a myth. Yeah. So far, those are the books. But I follow you on your audio. But, but those are very powerful books you have read. What will you say about that one on the Nigeria one? Is it just for Nigeria? Because it says Nigeria. Some people might say, oh, that's about Nigeria. No, no. It's everyone who has got that religious mindset <laughs> and thinking it's only prayer. Okay. Can it and help can it help Ghanaians or Ugandans, absolutely, Kenyans? Absolutely. The continent, everywhere, every nation, everyone. It gives the understanding that prayer is a means, it's not an end. This book here? Yes, it's a means. So you pray to get ideas, and then you have to go to work. You have to work so hard, again, to convert it, if I have to link it to our topic for today. Yes, it's another brilliant book. Another brilliant book. Excellent. What will you tell people who have never who say they don't like to read, or they have never read any of my books? You are missing a lot. You are missing a lot. You have got creativity inside of you. It is in the place of solitude. When you sit down and you are alone, that's when you begin to realize you know, the ideas you've got and what you can do with those ideas. If you don't pause and sit down, if you haven't got time to read, you are missing so much. You are missing so much. I'm missing so much. Every great achiever is a reader. Every successful person is a reader. So if you want the best for your life, you have to create time to read. Even if it's just 10 minutes in a day, 
they just start the process. And the first wish to start with DSA. Why? <laughs> Your books, you know, they are not just words and just ideas, but there is some spirit behind the words and the ideas that gets people to act, that empowers people to want to be what they have read. And that you don't see in many books. So I highly recommend. You know, you are not the only one saying this. Many people say this all the time. They say that right. they get some extra energy, some yeah. power upon them, some energy yeah. drives yeah. them that they just don't know what. Some yeah. of, you know, I have a, fr I had a friend, Miles Monroe, and some yeah. of my people said they have read these books before, but they don't know what to do after reading the book. They get the knowledge, yeah. but they don't know how to practice it. But yeah. they said, but when you read these books, DSA's yeah. books, that you just want to do, you know exactly what to do. Absolutely, yes. That is your distinctive factor. That's something unique about you, unique about yourself. And I think that's what you know drew me to you. Some some people are asking here. Uh, I want to believe the books and other books of DSA are available on Charisma House. No, my books are not on Charisma House. Only two books are in Charisma House, and they will publish my Churchship book and my Money Won't Make You Rich. But all my books are on Amazon. Oh, they are on Amazon. And if you are on Amazon Unlimited, that is Kindle Unlimited, you could actually get them for free. But if they are too expensive for you on Amazon, you could just write to my office. Write to my office. And the way to do it is to write to DSA's books. D-S-A-S books. One word. DSA's books at gmail.com dssbooks at gmail.com and then you've got to that is my office so they will send you a whole list they will send you the full list of all my books and then you'll be able to pick the ones you want or you could if you are in a hurry to buy them instead of writing to the office you could just go to my blog right now and some people said all oh, the books are not there but i hope they will be there now just go to my blog sunday at daylight your blog dot com slash books sunday adelajablog dot com slash books so sunday adelajablog dot com slash books you could get all the books there as well uh, but amazon is one sunday adelajablog dot com slash books is another some people say not all the books are on sunday adelajab but i think it, it will be there now or it is there already all the books so and then you could write to DSS books at gmail.com. DSS books at gmail.com. So, yeah, that's how you could get uh, some of these books. But the book we are actually analyzing today is this one. <laughs> Before we go, uh, John, yeah. a few words to characterize this book for people who just came in. How will you describe? How will you recommend? How will you? Uh, what words will, will, will you use to qualify this book? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a book that will get you to act. It is a book. You no, know, first it will equip you. Uh, it will make you convinced without any reasonable doubt that you have got what it takes to convert and it gives you the tools to convert that the tools you need time you have got it just like any other person who has money to convert you Gates and steve jobs they've all got 24 hours you've also got it and then it takes work to work on your mind to have a developed mind so this book shows you and then it you know the way you can Convert. So, uh, in a nutshell, I would say this book has changed my life. And I think if you read it in your own way, it will inspire you and also transform your life in a, in, in a way. How will you so, rate it among the books, have, among my books, and among the books you have read? It is number one, by far. <laughs> number one. Not to 
discount all the other books. The, all the other books are, you know, first class. They are all exceptionally good. But personally, this was the one that resonated with me okay, when I was in desperation, when I didn't know what to do. The ideas I got from this book inspired me to act. It inspired me to want to leave a legacy out of the desperation. And I think everyone in life has got moments of difficulties. And those moments of difficulties we've got, the stories, the experiences, are all potential platforms. If you are able to convert, you may provide the platforms for what we will leave as legacy for the human race. Everybody has got an experience. It's just a question of whether you are able to convert it. And this book will get you inspired and get you to act. John, you have done so, so very well. Very, very well. Thank, Thank you so much. We are coming out in the next 35 minutes. We are going to, I'm going to come out live again. But you have done justice to this book. And I'm sure many people are going to be inspired to get a copy for themselves and for their children. You know, you are doing so well, John. Keep on making God proud and keep on bringing more products out. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you much. Say. You've done thank well. You, yes. And thank you to the team. They've been very exceptional in their communication with me. Thank you, thank sir. You thank you. Bye.